Hello, welcome to, Basic Timber, and, Steel Design. Now, we are going to do an example on design of compression members for load capacity of a timber column. Here is the question. A timber column in strength class SG5 is 4 meters height with a rectangular cross section of 97 millimeters times 145 millimeters as shown in figures. The column is restrained at both ends in positions but not in direction. First, determine the maximum axial long-term load that the column can support. Second, check that the column is adequate to resist a long-term axial load of 12 kN and a bending moment of 1.0 kN meters about xx axis. The first step is, to determine the geometrical properties of the cross-section. Refer to Malaysian Standard Part 2, Table 10 for the effective length of compression members. The column is restrained at both ends in positions but not in direction, hence the effective length is length multiplied by 1.0 equal to 4 meter. The next geometrical properties of the cross section to be calculated are, radius of gyration and section modulus using the respective formula as shown slide. These values will be used in the next steps. The slenderness ratio of compression members should be calculated as the effective length divided by the radius of gyration. Refer to clause 13.4, the slenderness ratio should not exceed 180 for compression member carrying dead and imposed loads other than loads resulting from wind. The check is satisfactory since the slenderness ratio less than the limit 180. Grade stresses for timber strength class SG5, assume dry and select grade is refer to Malaysian Standard Table 4. The values of, bending parallel to grain is equals 12.1 Newton per millimeter square, compression parallel to grain is equals 10.8 Newton per millimeter square and, minimum modulus of elasticity is equals 6300 Newton per millimeter square. Modification factors should be applied to the grade stresses as given in tables in Malaysian standard to obtain permissible stress. For compression member, there are only three modification factors need to be considered, K1, K2 and K8 based on the given situations. Refer Table 5 for a modification factor K1, for duration of loading. In this question, for a condition of load duration long term. K1 is 1.0. There are no information given, related to modification factor K2, load sharing. Hence, modification factor is 1, for K2. K8, modification factor for compression members. Refer clause 13.5 for a modification factor K8, compression member without bending. For compression members with slenderness ratios equal to or greater than 5, the modification factor, K8, given in Table 6 or calculated using the equation in Annex C. You can choose any of these methods. The modification factor, K8, given in Table 6 can be determined by looking at the intersect point of for vertical direction and horizontal direction. Vertical direction represents slenderness ratio which has been calculated in previous step. Whereas horizontal direction represented by the modulus divided by grade stress, 583.33. The slenderness ratio 142.85 can be plotted by interpolate the value among 140 and 160 and the value of 583.33 among 500 and 600 for horizontal direction. The value of K8 can be determined by looking the intersect point of for vertical direction and horizontal direction. Thus, K8 equals 0.16. The modification factor, K8, also can be calculated using the equation in Annex C. The value of the modification factor, K8, for compression members with slenderness ratios equal to or greater than 5 is given by the equation. The modification factor for compression member, K8, can be calculated using either one of the following methods. 
K8 is 0.14 using equation in Annex C, whereas K8 is 0.16 using Table 6. Take the larger value among these. Hence, K8 is 0.16. Now, we are already having a modification factors K, for all the situations given by the question, K1, K2 and K8. Let's move to next step. Part A, determine the maximum axial long-term load that the column can support. The permissible compressive stress determined by multiplied grade stress by a number of all modification factors become 1.73 Newton per millimeter square. Hence the axial long-term load capacity of the column is calculated by rearranging the formula of stress, P over A thus. The maximum axial long-term load that the column can support is 24.33 kN. Part B. Check that the column is adequate to resist supplied loading. Given applied long-term axial load of 12 kN and a bending moment of 1.0 kN meters about x, x-axis. Final step is to check the interaction quantity formula in clause 13.6, for compression and bending stress. The combination of compression and bending stress must be equal or less than 1 to satisfy interaction quantity formula. The applied compressive stress is P over A. P is applied load, 12 kN. And, A. Is cross-sectional area. It is become 0.85 Newton per millimeter square. The permissible compressive stress determined by multiplied grade stress by all related modification factors become 1.73 Newton per millimeter square. The compressive stress is satisfactory due to applied compressive stress not exceed the allowable compressive stress. The applied bending stress is moment of 1 kN meter divided by section modulus calculated in step number 1, determine the geometrical properties of the cross section. It is become 2.94 N per millimeter square. Whereas the permissible bending stress determined by multiplied grade stress by all modification factors become 1.94 N per millimeter square. These values requires to calculate the interaction quantity formula. By substituting all the values of stresses from previous steps, now we can calculate the interaction quantity formula. It is 2.12 which has exceeded the limit 1.0. Hence the interaction quantity is unsatisfactory. Now, we already determine the maximum axial long-term load that the column can support, the capacity is 24.33 kN and on the inadequacy of column to resist applied loads. All the best. And thank you for your attention.